a very good morning to all of you. Um, yeah, so we, I will share about this uh, Go On Galleries. Um, it, as you can see from the name, uh, Glow On actually means two things. Uh, first, which means that uh, to shine. So it's to shine like a firefly. So uh, we are using this metaphor um, to link the content of this gallery. And then um, in Chinese, it's the name is Chiji Yong Xu Song Guan. So uh, we talk about the sustainabilities. Uh, and you can see we purposely um, putting the two, di two direction in the Chinese and English name because we want to showcase different things to our different target audience. Uh, yeah, so first of all, I would like to ask all of you, do you know where is this place? Yeah, I think it's so famous that everyone in the world know. Uh, this is the Singapore Jewel, Changi Jewel, which is a famous uh, shopping mall just next to the Changi Airport. Um, the building itself uh, won the building of the years in year 2020s, and also the design awards in year 2020. So uh, there is only one building wins uh, won the building of the years in each year. But there is a list of building we get this uh, design awards in each year. So among all the lists of the building that won this architecture architect uh, award, one of them is our uh, Singapore Chiji Humanistic Youth Center. So uh, the very um outstanding uh, architecture, architecture firm under the guidance of master. Um, we designed a youth center that um, with a modern change uh, design just next to a beautiful pond. So um, we won this uh, Singapore Institute of Architects uh, Design Awards. And the gallery I'm going to talk about just located uh, inside this um, center. Um, the area of this um, center is, uh, this gallery is about um, 336 square meters. So uh, you can see the before and after comparison uh, of this uh, gallery. So uh, it's quite amazing uh, for us like to take three years back and forth uh, to collaborate with different teams. So uh, in the end, we we curated these uh, galleries. So actually, uh, where is this uh, Humanistic Youth Center? Where is the uh, short form we call HYC? It's located at the north, northern part of Singapore, um, near, very near Malaysia, near the Pasikudang of the Johor state in Malaysia. And then if we zoom in to this, uh, the environment of this youth center, uh, you can see there's a very scenic uh, pond next to it, uh, we call it uh, Isun Pond, and people can jog around the uh, Isun Pond Park. And then um, next to this uh, youth center, there's the uh, Kudapuat Hospitals, one of the mega, very big hospital in Singapore. And it is a uh, green hospitals because um, the hospital itself is a sister hospital with the Suji Hospital in Taiwan. So um, both both of the Suji Hospital and Kudapuat Hospital signed uh, MOU to promote uh, green and vegetarianism in the in these hospitals. And then just next to this youth center, we have the Fusa Arena, which is a football view, football field. And every every day you can see a lot of the youth playing football in this uh, uh football field. So it's a very useful place uh, next to a very uh, nature place. And then um, when we first uh, setting up, established this uh, youth center, um, our um, we already identified the five pillars of this uh, youth center. And the first four of these uh, pillars um, in line with the objective of this uh, Go On Galleries. So uh, they are the art and culture, the social uh, cause awareness, youth wellness and volunteerism. The last one now we are a little bit lacking behind, but I think in the near future, the center if they will like put more resources in this uh, young parenting. 
And if you have the chances to visit this uh, center, and uh, our gallery is just located um, when you go in from the main entrance and then you turn right, uh, the gallery itself is at the end of this, uh, uh, this path. Um, the project itself uh, for us is tech uh, three years and then not only including the gallery that I talk about, the Go On Gallery, we also in charge of the entrance gallery, which is the main entrance that I mentioned just now. Previously, it was all empty without any uh, display item, but we found that uh, there's a need for us to introduce uh, who is Suji and who is a uh, uh, youth center to the young generation for the student that are using this uh, space as a study area. So um, the objective of having this entrance gallery is to have the very brief introduction to the user, to the visitor uh, in this uh, HYC. And we also introduce the missions, um, the four mission plus additional the uh, environmental protection mission and also our international relief efforts uh, and our Thai technologies uh, in this uh, entrance gallery. So this entrance gallery we complete uh, in the third quarter last year. And for the Go On Gallery, we complete uh, this year third quarters. So and now we come back to a very uh, fundamental questions. Uh, why we are having a gallery and exhibition in uh, the youth center? Um, actually, it's good to know understand that uh, in urban area like those uh, very modern cities, there's a trend for the young generations to visit art gallery or the exhibition or the museum. So it's a way for people to gain knowledge, to uh, to understand a lot of the information by visiting uh, exhibitions. So exhibition is also a way of the communication channel um, because uh, it is a 3D experience. It is a five senses experience for the visitors. So what are the message that we're going to convey to our target audience? Obviously it's a strategic value. We want to convey a strategic value to our target audience, which is the local English speaking youth. But um, of course there's challenge because uh, for the local youth, they are not much, they are not pretty much interested in the history of uh, NGO or the organizational value of an NGO, especially the NGO itself is originated from Taiwan. So uh, it's hard to find a common point or common ground between uh, the target audience and the message they will want to convey. So we're trying to find out the common ground. And then um, the framework of this uh, sustainability came in um, because uh, we observed for the young generation, uh, they are really very, very care about the, uh, the future because um, they have to, they, of course they live longer, so they will experience the climate uh, crisis they being faced by them when they are still alive. So uh, sustainability become a common language that we're going to share street value to them. So um, what is the sustainability framework? Um, when we talk about sustainability, we should not uh, only focus on the environmental aspect because um, people need to live a living. We need to consider the social context, the cultural context of certain community before we start a green initiative. So the aspect of the social and the aspect of the economics um, these three aspects are all equally important. By considering these three aspects, uh, the initiative will be sustainable in the future. So um, our team finally come up with a positioning um, of this uh, gallery itself. We want to be the first choice for the local to learn uh, sustainable living. 
So when people think of sustainable living, they will think of this uh, golden gallery and they will expect what to learn from uh, our gallery. And then um, for the sustainability itself, uh, among these three aspects, the easiest aspect to achieve uh, should be this uh, environmental aspect. And the most difficult aspect to achieve is the economic aspect because uh, there are so many green initiatives around the world, but people still don't want to change the habit or adopt the new model because sometimes the sound is not economic uh, viable, financially viable to adopt a new new initiative. But I think you can uh, notice we use the word uh, sustainable living. Um, why sustainable living instead of the sustainability? Um, because uh, sustainability itself is more profound. It's not... Um, it's not that uh, academics. So we use the word uh, sustainable living. Uh, it's more um, friendly for the public. So it should be something, the thing that we suggest in this uh, theory itself should be practicable uh, at the individual level instead of the community level or the policy making level. So we want to make sure that everything, the message we convey there should be um, applicable for every individual. And then we want to promote that uh, volunteerism and eco sustainability as a lifestyle for everyone. Last one, uh, we want to relax the content of this uh, gallery to the national policy, which is the Singapore Green Plan 2030s. So maybe I take one example of how we can use uh, these three aspects to retell, to retell the story of uh, our Suji. So uh, just, just uh, coin, coincidentally, Mother Sean shared about this and uh, the things about lifestyles. Um, yeah, our um, adult master in uh, things about, actually they, they, they practice, they, they build a sustainable communities 60 years ago. Um, first, you can see that our monastic, our master there, they live a zero waste lifestyle. They cherish everything. They cherish every natural resources um, given to them. They, they create, they try to minimize uh, the waste they created. So this is the icon, uh, the environmental aspect. And, and then they also support the Suji Foundation global charity work. Um, so we, they serve as a very strong backbone for the volunteers to, uh, especially in terms of the logistics or the spiritual teaching to support us to carry on with our charity works. So this is the, uh, the contribution of the things that are brought to the rest of the world. And then the last one, um, they practice the no work, no, no meal principle, which they grow their own uh, products, they manufacture their own products and sell it through the global things outlet and become self reliance uh, financially. Another point to look at uh, to look at this uh, from this angle is uh, we, we know that all the global enterprise they really emphasize on the credibility because there's a trust between the customer and the enterprise itself. So as our things are about, because we really follow, we in terms of financially, we follow strictly. We want to uh, build a trust between the donor and our our organization itself. So there's a strong credibility being showcased by our things are about master themselves. So by using this example, we can retell the story of this uh, using the framework of the sustainable sustainability. And in the gallery itself, it's showcased uh, several products um, 
that our adult make are making. So one of them is the cheerless candles. Um, so how can we tell the stories? We can say uh, like back then in 1981, where the international organization or the United Nations, they haven't thought, they haven't, they haven't started to talk about this uh, sustainability. Uh, our master already noticed uh, the importance of this sustainability. Uh, she not about the the wax, the the common candle is using a lot, wasting a lot of wax. So uh, she innovated a candle they using the Yakut bottles. So your Yakut bottles for the other is a waste, right? So people may throw away, but our master she tried to reuse everything. So it's try to apply the concept of this uh, zero waste. And then she used the Yakut bottle as a moat and the incense as a wicks. So to, re re to replace the original wicks, which is, uh, couldn't fit in. So the incense itself is a very cultural, common thing. So it's a very culturally fits into the Taiwanese uh, communities. It's a very common, common, common material can found in Taiwan. And then the incense uh, allowed the candle to burn completely without dipping the wax or emitting any um, back smoke. So uh, the candle itself is the tearless candles. So the monastery, the master in our adult can sell the candles to the public. So to uh, self-sustain financially. So using the item itself, we can also tell the stories from these three aspects. Yeah, so our target audience for this uh, gallery is uh, mainly, primary is uh, Singapore youths, and then second and third is those uh, business, um, business or education institution that they want to fulfill their CSR, and also the government agency and the grassroots organization, because uh, previously these two group of people always uh, write in, they want to visit our um, Eco Awareness Center. Uh, they want to learn about our environmental efforts. How to uh, really apply the environmental efforts into our daily life. So this group of people, they, they are really interested to learn about our uh, Eco efforts. But uh, our, Eco our Eco Awareness Center already closed down during the COVID time. So um, the function is they will move to this uh, go on galleries. And last but not least, our Suji partners, because uh, they, they agree with our uh, they agree with our values. So we want to want them to learn more about Suji. And then Suji volunteers also uh, is another group of people they want to serve. Um, because um, no matter uh, be it uh, old volunteer or the senior volunteers, there's something that we can learn and relearn in this uh, gallery. And our team uh, established a uh, five strategy so we can uh, move on for the curation. The first strategy is uh, the project itself should be the project that walk the talk. So all the party involved uh, should try our best to minimize the carbon footprints from the installation phase to the operation phase. And then second, the layout and the design of this gallery should be in line with the uh, HYC uh, aesthetics and also the contemporary design so we can attract the ice wall of the young generation. So how can we minimize the carbon footprints so we gather, we bought, we bought, or we, uh, we, we get those uh, secondhand furnitures and make them become the display items in our gallery. So you can see the the first the single sewing machine. I think a lot of people uh, in their nanny house they can find this uh, sewing machine. And these sewing machines we get from a uh, nanny um, who cannot doing the sew work because. Uh, already sick and then her daughter sold to to us um, but we preserve everything of this uh, sewing machine uh, in the drawer itself all the sewing tool and item being used by this old nanny we can still find in the drawer yeah and then also we can see the 
really classic uh, bathtubs. Uh, we bought online also, secondhand, and also the wooden door and the wooden wardrobes all are being used by uh, as a uh, display items. And also, uh, one of the display zone we talk about fast fashion. So we collect uh, the unwanted clothes um, being thrown by local residents. Uh, we collected uh, around 80 kg uh, from a social enterprise. Uh, it's not, it's a very easy task to complete because there are so, so much that we, uh, Singapore people throw away so many unwanted clothes. So we can achieve this uh, task in a blink eyes. And we engage our volunteer to tidy up this uh, unwanted cloth and put it nicely into the wardrobes. And on the right, we can see our uh, volunteer. They are doing, they are collecting the plastic bottles uh, from a marathon events. So uh, they gather the clean uh, bottles and then we wash it again and then we dry it. Um, but why we want to collect so many uh, plastic bottles? Because we want to make into a uh, very uh, huge uh, growing globes uh, at the entrance as an eye-catching uh, display item. Uh, this go growing globe itself is made from 1,800 PET bottles. So you can see the bottom of the plastic bottle is displayed on the surface of the globes. Uh, all these uh, efforts, we engage uh, our partners, uh, CBG Corporation, to count the carbon footprints. So the total carbon mitigates in this uh, gallery is around uh, 668 uh, kg of carbon dioxide. And it's equivalent to uh, the carbon dioxide being absorbed um, by 30 mature tree in a year. And then a uh, second, the HYC Aesthetics, we try to preserve the, um, we try to preserve the design element of the HYC. So you can see the human character, Chinese character of, on the rooftop of the main entrance. And then we preserve the elements in the gallery itself. And also the die cards to show the location, the name of the location in the uh, center uh, to show like, for example, the top one, the classroom the name is as a power station. So uh, also we preserve the same design element in the gallery itself to show the, to show the uh, zone. And also the, Right one, we can see the uh, bamboo bank itself, uh, very basic, uh, fundamental spirits uh, in the modern gen design. And what is the third to fifth uh, strategy? Um, yeah, we actually, um, the third one is we try to make our display items interactive, but uh, low carbon. Why? Because uh, all those high-tech uh, interactive installation, most of them, they are very energy consuming. So it's not uh, in line with our first principle. And then also, we are also rest restricted by our budget. So we will try to install those uh, mechanical uh, installation. And we present the Suzy content in a non-historical narrative. We used to uh, tell the story of Suzy by saying like, for example, the first decade as the decade of charity mission, the second decade as the decade of uh, medical medicine mission. But we found that it might not be so attractive for the young generation because it's too, they are, they are not mature enough to understand the importance of history. So we're trying to uh, reshape the narrative uh, from the non-historical approach. And then number four, we try to uh, involve our community volunteers and the partner from the center to participate as a community project. And the fifth, uh, we also we want to collect data 
from the visitor to reflect our influence on the local communities. So how are we going to uh uh to to uh to show the low carbon and interactive installation? So uh you can see from the right one, the volunteer is showing a uh, uh cloth second hand cloth with the, the cloth hanger to the visitors and to explain the hidden cost of this uh, fast fashion industry so it might seem really uh, nothing happened right so when we pass the cloth hanger and the cloth to the visitor they can directly feel the weight of this uh, cloth hanger it's really heavy for them it's uh, you want to create one one want them to feel themselves how heavy is the cloth to represent the hidden cost behind the fast fashion industry and actually the weight itself being experienced by the visitor is only one percent of the total weight because uh, we count in the water consumption from the production to the end uh, and the cotton production when we plant the cotton is consume a lot a lot of the water and the next one is the uh, installation of this globe but i think i should reshare again because i forgot to include the sound uh, please wait. try to share okay okay let me take the button okay uh <laughs> Okay, so the ball will follow the gravity to go around the globes and the ball will trigger sound and light. Uh, why we want to do that? Because we want to mimic the domino effects uh, to show the visitor that any small action will carry big impact, be it a positive impact or negative impact. So we must be mindful of our small action. So this is a message we want to bring out to the uh, visitors and behind the globe you can see the digital clock which is the climate clock that master keeps uh, mentioning two years ago to let the visitor understand there's the urgency to uh, take actions before the our uh, our our earth uh, surpass the two degrees celsius and uh, and in doing the gallery, we have two paths, the personal path and the collective impact path. Um, the main, most of the personal action path, we focus on the environmental aspect. And most of the collective path, we focus on the uh, social and economic uh, sustainabilities. Uh, so this is the overall layout of the gallery. So when you first come in from the entrance, you can see the eye-catching uh, going globes that we explain uh, what is sustainability and what is the overall of this uh, gallery itself. And we come to a point to decide whether we want to go to the personal path or the collective path. So let's say we follow the personal path. Then in this area, we can see we emphasize on the how the small action can bring big consequences and then we move in from outdoor setting to the indoor setting so uh, we talk about the invisible cause uh, the importance of fire in our daily life and then uh, the cost of eating meat in the setting of uh, the kitchen and then the cost of our houseware in the setting of the living room and then the cost of fast fashion in the setting of bedroom and the cost of <laughs> waste in the cost of uh, the bar, uh, the bathroom. And then last <laughs> they went out, they will have the chances to sell access their carbon footprints. Then they will come out to the outdoor setting. And for the outdoor setting, um, let's say we follow the outdoor setting. Um, we will first share to them the humble beginning of the Chi Foundation, the spirit of Bamboo Bank, and then to showcase uh, how our monastery in adopt live a sustainable lifestyle, and then uh, also our formation 
uh, showcase to showcase the the our global strategic efforts, and then also the master Chinese stories. Last one, uh, that last but not least, the uh, uh, this is the uh, uh public housing corridor setting in Singapore to show the local uh efforts of Chuji in in the neighborhoods, and also last one is the pagoda settings, uh, in the garden. We showcase the our international relief efforts and our Dai Dai technologies there. So this is the setting that I talk about: the bathroom, the public housing corridor, and the living room and the kitchen. So uh, for the kitchen one, because we want to emphasize the uh, benefit of vegetarianism of plant-based diets, so there will be a role paying between the volunteers and the visitors. So our volunteer will act as a chef to ask what kind of food they want to prepare for them that they can choose. So they can select different display items and put on the weighing machine. So uh, when they put on the weighing machine, the number shown in the weighing machine should uh, is the carbon dioxide footprints instead of the real the real uh the kg la, the real weight itself. So we want to show the hidden cost of every uh, meal that we select that we choose in our daily life. So to learn to to let the to let the visitor have the direct uh, understanding of the hidden cost behind every meal that we choose. So uh, our curation team they are very uh, mindful. They con they convert the content they want to convey to the display item uh, that we can see. So um, for the personal path is in the personal space, which is the indoor setting. So you can see it's the house setting like, like IKEA, IKEA setting itself. And for the um, collective impacts path is the outdoor setting because it's a public space. So that's why we can see the public uh, housing corridor setting and also the pagoda garden setting in the outdoor. Okay, and also we involve our volunteers uh, in the process and also uh, our partner. For example, they are mentioned just now the secondhand cloth uh, social enterprise and also the environmental consultant companies. And uh, the third one is the similar, similar uh, is the social enterprise that reuse, repurpose the plastic waste and the uh, wooden waste into the furniture. So we bought uh, the furniture and put it in our reception uh, area and very important very important is our co-creator the curation team that we work together and they are a very useful and very creative team uh, award-winning teams uh, in singapore they won the best uh, exhibitions uh, awards two years ago and then now they work with us and then they try the best uh, the journey is around one year. They try their best to understand about the city philosophy, to communicate with us, to adjust to our uh, requirements. So we are very really glad to work with them. The average the average age of them is around is less than thirty five years old. So it's a it's not an easy journey because uh we did a lot of the uh copywritings for the Chinese and the English also. For the Chinese, the main purpose is to serve the internal customer with our uh, partner and our volunteers. So a lot of Chujit term is used. But uh, for the English copywriting, we serve the public. So we tone down all the Chujit elements. So basically, it's not, it is not translation. It is tr trans creation. We rewrite everything so we can serve the two purpose at the same time. Uh, the fifth strategy is to collect data. Uh, there are two, two, two parts that we collect data. The, part, the first part I mentioned is the self-assessment of the visitor to self-assess their carbon footprints. And the tablet itself is also a second-hand second -hand tablet that we collect from we, someone donate to us. And then the right one is uh, very mechanical, very uh, old-fashioned, but very interesting. You can pick a ball and to vote yourself. So the question we ask the visitor is to ask them to reflect because according to Singapore government, there are five, five 
main uh, challenges faced by the local societies if we didn't if we continue with our original uh, lifestyle so what is the challenges uh, the first one is the submerged neighborhood for the lowland so the sea water will rise and then submerge the neighborhood and then the second one is the climate uh, extreme climates where I experience a lot of heavy rain and dry season uh, very have already obvious and then the third one is the shortage of food because Singapore is is the urban cities with, without the uh, uh, agricultural land so uh, Singapore will face the food security problem and then the fourth one is the spread of diseases especially dengue and then the fifth one is the loss of biodiversity so it will let the visitor to think to ponder and to work for themselves okay now we come to the firefly metaphor uh from the graphic itself you see three firefly they are flying toward the same direction and the one leading the five the one leading is the one growing so uh so you can see the one growing is the leader so it's also in line with the master teaching uh seen two years ago why firefly why master master want to uh, symbolize a uh, firefly as the uh, our volunteer as a firefly because um volunteers our volunteer actually ourselves uh, we need to inspire ourselves first we need to shine ourselves first before we inspire the love of the others so we need to inspire our own love so we can inspire the others second the one who inspire our love uh, will attract the other firefly the other will shine up themselves and come together to form a bigger and brighter spot in the night. And why we want to light up the night? Because uh, we want to guide the lost people, the one who lost their direction in the dark. So it's so uh, important because in recent years, we faced a lot of the kind of uh, war, the Ukraine war, the Gaza war, and then a lot of the natural disaster, the refugee crisis. Sometimes, a lot of times, it brings disappointments. It discourages us when we see this kind of chaotic uh, environment happening around us. But uh, the firefly metaphor show, uh, tell us the stories, the darker the night, the brighter the light. So we need to be the hopes for the other. So we need to shine ourselves first. We'll be the hope first so we can uh, inspire the other so the other can be the hope for the others. So by this, doing this, we can spread the positivity to the community, to the society. And then also, scientifically, firefly is the, is the ecological indicator because uh, firefly is really sensitive to clean water and uh, clean food source and also the light pollution. So it's a really good in ecological indicator. One, you find firefly in certain uh, ecosystem, which means it's a healthy ecosystem. And last one, uh, firefly itself in Singapore context is the national symbol. Why I say so? Because uh, there is a new firefly species discovered in Singapore four years ago. Uh, the name is called uh, Luciola Singapora. The species name is named after the Malay name of Singapore. Uh, so it shows how important this uh, firefly to the local community. And this firefly is very really tiny. It's less than 5 mm long in the Nishun Shrunk Forest, which is the only remaining fresh for freshwater shrunk forest in Singapore. Um, the, the firefly is like a one of us. We are so tiny, but we are so important. When we gather our light, we can bright up the night. And when we bring up the idea of this uh, firefly, there are some comments we heard. Uh, one of them is like, uh, the firefly has a short life cycles. So it is suitable to use this as a metaphor. Um, but back to the biological knowledge, the nature is fair to every living creature. For those who have life, short life cycle, they can adapt to the very chain, uh, fast chaining environment happening around the species because there's, there's a higher chance for this uh, species to have, to have mutation, to have the gene mutation, they can, they can involve to adapt to the changing environment. So for those who have life, short life cycle, they can easier to form a new species. So where is this uh, Nishun Shan Forest? 
It's just next to the uh, the Chuji Humanistic Youth Center, just five kilometer away from there. So you want to bring the message to the visitor that the big topic we're talking about is not far, far away from you. It's something next to you, something near to you. So if we didn't protect our environmental well, if we didn't do our uh, social uh, education well, we will destroy the future of this newly founded uh, species. Your next generation may not be have a chance to see the firefly. Yeah, and it's even further away from our things to hall. So this is the Nishun Plant Forest. And then um, the founder, the, the scientific group that found, that discovered this uh, species, Mr. Lim, he comment on this uh, discovery. He, he said the discovery itself is very significant to the science in Singapore, and it's shown the importance of conserving the last freshwater shrine forest in Singapore. Singapore itself is very, very small already, when you see from the map. And then the last freshwater shrine forest, even smaller. So it's very vulnerable. So once we create a lot of the uh, water pollution, the we, just, we create a lot of uh, light pollution and even the salt pollution, it may trigger the survival of this uh, Luciola Singapore. And interestingly, I found for this species itself, in the we can find the same genius uh, across the Asia, which means the cousin of this uh, species uh, around uh, Asia and the Oceania forms the Sri Lanka to the Pacific Islands and to the Japan. So it's like, I, I mean, it's similar to the Suji metaphor. Our We have a lot of branch office uh, around the world. And also we are different, different groups of this uh, firefly, but we share the same philosophy. We share the same genius. We share the same family, the name of the Suji. So it's so so interesting to compare these two together. Yeah, so we apply the we apply the uh, image of this uh, firefly into our design. So we can see from we have this uh, lenticular wall. We have from we see from this direction we can see a very beautiful uh, firefly, nice sceneries uh, from this direction. But we when we see from the other direction, it will see the Another message they want to bring out to the visitor is same fire, same light, but it's a destroy, it's a destructive power. They will, can bring destruct, uh, destructive power to the nature and the society. So we want to convey to the visitor that it's just in the blink of eyes, it's just in the chance of mindset, we can bring out different consequences to the nature and to the human society. So this is a reminder for all of us that every small action uh, tech have the meaning itself. So uh, yeah, I think I come to the end of the sharing. So maybe you have any question you can ask, uh, ask me. Yeah, thank you.